Eric Keller here with Enthusiast Auto Group. We are in EAG Super Secret Warehouse number one, and today we're going to talk about E36 M3 lightweights. These cars are quite rare, and a lot of people don't know all of the history about these cars, and so this is a fun opportunity to share the history both with the model as well as a couple examples that are now for sale in EAG's inventory. We have been a fan of these M3 lightweights ever since we first learned of them in the program and the platform. Just 126 of these things would be built, and it was built to homologate for IMSA, created by Mr. Eric Wensberg, the M brand director from the late 80s to the early 90s, and we've become pretty good friends with Eric over the years. And I'm going to cut away here for a second to a video from a holiday party uh, earlier this year where Eric was in town and uh, sharing his memories and uh, the, the history of the M3 Lightweight program. It was a really cool uh, day and, and uh, I'll let him speak exactly to, to just that. Lightweight that people can take right out to the Firebox series and run competitively. They did everything possible. They wanted to do it. They said, this is great, Mr. Wentzberg, lovely idea. We'll have them for you in January or February at the latest. Oh, everything's great. Next thing I know, they're calling me saying, well, there's been a little problem. The car's going to cost more expensive than you thought. And I said, why are we taking things out? We're not putting things in. He said, no, oh, that's not the way it works. It, it, it's more expensive. So, okay, this is the, the next thing I know, they're producing them in October of the next year. And I'm like, not only is the racing season all over, but the model year is over. You're giving me a car with no air conditioning, no radio, and no sound editing, and it's a model year old. And they say, oh, well, that's your challenge, Mr. Winsberg. This is, this, is, this is your project. Uh, thank you very little. Thank you. Uh, I joke to Eric Keller, who's in the room tonight. There he is. He sold, resold 30 or 40 of them. I said, the only one that made any money on the lightweight is this guy right here. <laughs> but God bless you for that. And having said that, it was a noble project that once again almost cost me my job. I have to thank Mr. Eric Wensberg for that nice compliment there, and we certainly have had a strong relationship and, and you know, like almost addiction with these M3 lightweights over the years, and with just 126 of them built, the first 10, uh, maybe 11, were pre-production cars that ended up being the race cars and development cars, and all of the changes that were part of the M3 lightweight program eventually made it into the racing programs and series, and that's what homologation cars' purpose are. And uh, the lightweights definitely have a, a cult-like following, and, and the guys that understand it and appreciate it certainly are a bit more on the uh, outspoken side of, of the topic. Um, but I can tell you that having driven these at, on track, having been on track with a lot of other cars, uh, lightweights that is, you know, it's obviously a very unmistakable car that certainly turns a lot of heads, and you know, it was at the front of the pack more times than not in that 96, 97 era. So these uh, three cars, uh, this one here uh, in focus is, is part of the EAG collection. It's one of the longest members of said collection and this is this is just a 47 mile car. Uh, really cool relationship with this one in storyline and, and how the car uh, ended up it, with EAG and it served as a great reference point of exactly how BMW built these cars and having gone through now 30 or so of these lightweights, if there's something that's not exactly right or we're questioning how BMW did it, we can take a look at how it's set up on this car and, and obviously make sure that the outbound quality is at our uh, level. So the car in the front here is a street car. It's never had the GT stuff installed. Frankly, it never was sold with the car. Uh, it was in the Bay Area all of its life and the original owner bought the car in 1997 and I'm sure got a heck of a deal and used the car as his daily driver. And the car's done 74,000 miles. We've had the car now for about two years and have just slowly uh, put it through the program and now bringing it to market. It's a fantastic car that's all numbers matching. It's never had any stories or drama. It's never been tracked. Uh, it's just, a, it's a survivor. And the car behind it is a new arrival and this is a car that's quite the opposite. This is a car that has seen some track. It has been driven in anger, and I'm sure that it's produced a lot of smiles per miles along the way. Uh, the car is outfit with a PTG-installed 
three liter, the S50 B30. It is a Group N a race spec engine. Uh, this car was also a little bit later on the sold side in 1997. It went to PTG to have all of that uh, go fast goodies installed. And those are the same engines that were running on the racetrack. And uh, they did opt for a six speed, which came out on the later production side uh, for the European market. It was used and driven uh, both street and track and then went to PTG, uh, or sorry, went to Fall Line, excuse me, outside of Chicago with the second owner and was set up for time attack, yet was never really used for that. And the next owner passed it along to another BMW enthusiast that was in the business in the Chicago land. And shortly thereafter, it ended up with the gentleman we bought the car from in Colorado, who's owned the car the majority of its life. And we've got a great book in the trunk here going over all of the stuff in history and a lot of spare takeoff parts and extras and uh, you know it's really a cool storyline and, and going through all of the stuff page by page and having all of the receipts uh, certainly are important in validating a car's pedigree all of these cars are numbers matching and all came with the hurricane cloth the lightweights had aluminum doors they had this interior uh, trim the carbon fiber with the uh, Motorsport limited edition plaques both on the outside as well as right there on the dash. Uh, no sound deadening installed anywhere on the chassis. It was about 200 pounds less than the street cars. And especially when you pair it with the Euro drivetrain, this thing is quite the capable track machine and the victories certainly speak for themselves. This car with just 25,000 miles has gone through the Rejuve program and just for the first time and quite excited to bring this to market. It absolutely rips and makes fantastic noises. That lightweight uh, flywheel is chattering about. Uh, it is really a, a all around driver's car. I, I learned a lot of uh, the initial track skills driving an E36 M3 car uh, that was pretty much built uh, mimicking a lightweight, a little bit less expensive in case something bad happened, which thankfully that has not yet happened in my driving and track career. But um, it's certainly a really fun hobby that these cars uh, are you know, out there and, and uh, being shown and driven and displayed, a lot of concours, a lot of enthusiasts that really understand the uh, you know, cars in this room, frankly, and, and appreciate them uh, are the ones that are gonna gravitate towards these. Lots more information on our YouTube channel coming up and really excited to bring these special cars to market. If you have any questions, give us a call, drop us an email through the website. We'd love to connect with you and share this hobby and passion with our fellow enthusiasts. Thanks. See you.